All right, our next guest tonight is, is a gentleman by the name of Mark Scott. And he has written a book called The Appointment, A Wake-Up Call. Man, I like, I like what I'm hearing. Make him welcome on the set tonight. Mark, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here uh, on the show. I want, you, I want you to just jump in and, and tell us something about this book, A Wake-Up Call. Man, if, if there's ever been a time the church needed a wake-up call, here it is. Well, basically, the premise of the book uh, is about uh, us as Christians and mm -hmm. us as, as the church, as the church stands today, needs a wake-up call. Yes. Uh, there's so many things that are happening in the world, and God is speaking to the church, and he's saying, wake up, mm. wake up. You know, it was interesting. When I was writing the book, God took me to uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. And so Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was struggling with this, this mission. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. And, and, and so he asked God, he said, Father, if thy will, take thy cup from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what he was asking, he, he was struggling with that. But he makes a decision <laughs> that, that literally changes the face of eternity. And he says, you know, nevertheless, and yes. as I was looking at that, I saw that he wasn't trying to figure it out anymore. He yes. basically aligned himself up with mm. the Father. Wow. And by aligning himself up with the Father, his destiny aligned up with him. You see, many Christians, we, what we try to do is we try to catch up with God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what we try to do, we try to catch up. And God said, don't catch up. Just line up with me. Just line up. And my mm. provisions, God says, my provisions will line up with you. Absolutely. And so what we're trying to do, and we're struggling there. Oh, wow. Wow. Absolutely. You know, you reminded me of something. Mark, I, I heard a story once of a pastor. Yes. Went into the community, and I, I'm going to win this community. I'm going to take it, you know, and... And uh, he has assigned everybody to their task and they knocked on the doors and they passed out the literature. And, and after they had completely exhausted themselves, he was in his study and he was just saying, Lord, no success. Nothing yeah. has happened. And the Lord just kind of patted him on the shoulder and said, son, now do you want to line up with my ways? Yes, <laughs> yes. Now you want to do this the way that I assign you to do this. So, so, yeah, we need to line up, don't we? We need to line up. And, and you know, something I saw in, in, in that whole transition mode where Jesus was, also there is something about a standard. Yes. But, you know, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. Yes, he does. And we have to ask ourselves as a church, are we desiring more of a godly standard rather than projecting an image to people? Ah, uh, Wow. And so oh, what good. we try to do is we, we, we play this, this thing as far as we have to project an image. And God is saying, you know, we need to seek a standard. Nobody's right. perfect. No. Don't get me wrong. Nobody's right. perfect. But at times I think we need to, to desire a standard. You know, I looked at a dam, how they built the dam. Right. And, and the dam has a standard to it. Mm -hmm. So they have to build the dam higher than the water, so it has to have a standard that way. Mm -hmm. And they have to build it with depth so yep. it can withstand and hold the water back. So I looked at that standard which was built to hold that dam back because if it doesn't, it could take out a whole city. Mm -hmm. That's and right. God is saying we, we need to have a God-like standard so it holds back the enemies and the onslaught of the devil. Wow. And, and you know, Mark, something I, I, I pastor and something I have observed in my thinking, uh, we have a lot of people in the podium today that, that don't have the standard of the Word of God. And, right. and, and we spend a lot of time diffusing what's... What, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of guys in the pulpit now today who will say plainly, I don't believe the book. Well, you know what I say to that? If you don't believe the book, get out of the pulpit. Right. Right. Because there's a standard <laughs> that God's going to have, too. Exactly. And here it is. It's right here. In our faces, amen. Exactly, <laughs> it, and it's the standard. It, but we have to also understand the, the, the enemy tactics. Yes. You know, when, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights fasting, S Satan comes up on the scene. Yeah, yes, he does. And he says, you know, if you are the son of God, why don't you turn this stone into bread? Mm -hmm. And so what he was trying to do, he was trying to turn Jesus' perception into his reality. Mm. 
I'm going to say that he was trying to, because Jesus was hungry. Right. He was fasting. Mentally, he was tired. Right, exactly. And so what Satan will do, he can't stop a man's focus, but he can try to change it. <laughs> That's true. And so what he was trying to do is change Jesus' focus mm -hmm. into doing something that he wanted. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, you know what? No, uh, no, 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 no. Man yeah. should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth word. of God. <laughs> so he was eating off God's word. Yes. And so I believe that one of the things that as we move on in, in churches of the day, we have to be very careful mm. that we, we, we see the way God sees and we yeah. move the way God moves. Right, right. And we hear what he's saying. Wow. My, my. He, we got to hear what he's saying. You know, I was, uh, I was in, at a church one time and, and, and I saw some, the, the powerful move of the Holy Spirit and something happened in the pulpit where somebody was doing something that was contrary mm -hmm. to, to God. Yes. And it was like, okay, we're going to have, we're going to do this product, we're going to sell it. And it just deflated the Spirit of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful how, what we say from that podium, because that's God's mantle place. Absolutely. You know, I, I thought about, as you're talking, I thought about a story I heard of a gentleman. He, he was actually pastoring two churches, and, and one of them was much larger and more productive, and, and, and the other one was a bit smaller, but the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him, you are to release this one that mm. is the larger, and more monetarily sound and go over here to this one. Wow. But he gave him a key. He said, now here's what you do. Any person who participates in this ministry, they can't do nothing until they come and assemble on that Tuesday night for mm. that prayer meeting, that intercessory yes. prayer meeting, that gathering. And so out of that was birth Brooklyn Tabernacle. Ooh. Wow. So, so <laughs> see, wow. see, that is power. But when, when we align up with what God wants to do, you know, and, and I'm not hearing that much, and it's a little disappointing to me. Uh, you know, I, I'm like this. I tell our folk at our church, I said, look, if you let me obey the Lord, I'll be okay. But when you stop me, my heart will be grieved, <laughs> and I, I won't be able to continue. That's right. I got to stay in the flow. That's right. You got to <laughs> stay in the flow. Yeah. It, today, we have 2.5 billion people who are watching Christian television. That's huge. In 2025, they're going to be an estimated 3.8 billion people. That's one third of the population on this planet. Say that again. 3.8 billion people wow. will be watching Christian television. Now, wow. we have to look at the trend. The trend was this. First, there was soap operas. <laughs> and then when people got into soap operas, you know, we could vicariously live through somebody. We can take a character and say, that's my character. I want to live through that person. That's true. Without any risk. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we had, right today, we have reality TV. <laughs> and reality TV is not really reality TV because once the lights and cameras are off, you might get, you know, another person mm -hmm. there. Sure. So, you know, but when the cameras are on, people, you know, tend to play to the cameras. But when the cameras are off, uh. and then we have this thing called true TV mm -hmm. where you have cameras monitoring what's really happening. Right. And, the, and God began to deal with me about that. He said, you know, Mark, people live in one of those three. They either live in a soap opera mentality, living through other people, or they live in a reality where they're one way one day and the next way another day, Yes. or they want God's appointment in their life. And God is waiting to see how they respond to his appointments. Now, God appointments are like this. They're like markers. Yes. And every day you have appointments and, and you have a daily appointments and you have a doctor's appointments. And, you know, if you have a wife, there's appointments over there. Mm -hmm. But God has set aside appointments and markers in our lives for change. Mm -hmm. And these appointments look like frustration and feel yeah. like uh, failures, but they're not. They are like a gauge that determines what course or track we are actually on. Wow. Wow. And so we have to be careful that we do not, do not miss these markers. Now, these markers are, for example, are markers, for example, like uh, someone who needs a ride to work or something you've seen every day, a reoccurring event. God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> if yeah. you see it every day, God is trying to say, you, you, you got to, you know, there's something God you, was you telling me. To I saw, this. Yeah. You, you got you, you to you fix this mark. Yeah. And so those things are, that are put in place are markers and counter markers that God is trying to get us back on course. Mm. So, so 
tell me, tell me about how did this book come about? Tell me about this. Well, the book basically came about, I was writing uh, from some experiences I had uh, in ministry and experiences I had in my life mm -hmm. uh, as a Christian and, and growing up and as a PK kid. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. You know, he's a PK kid. You know, we always have that stigma, you know, oh, he's yeah, a PK right. kid. And, and so I began to write and the Lord just began to talk to me about the book. And as I was writing, I was saying some things and God said, Mark, I want you to write it this way. Mm. And I had literally, I had to delete paragraphs and it, I wrote it and he said, write it this way. And it, and I would write, and he said, no, that's not, that's not me. I want a oh. message to the church, and I yes. want a message to Christians. Wow. And as I was writing, he said, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. And so, and that's pretty much the premise and how the book formulated at that time. Well, well tell us, tell us uh, a little bit more about what, what is actually here. Okay. I mean, give me some, give well, me some, uh, some, Okay, you got some titles here. It talks about the battle. The battle. The, the intersection, the You're, lost generation. Man, yes. you got some good stuff happening there. Well, the battle, basically, every battle that ever happened historically or even some battles biblically mm -hmm. was only a diversion to get your eyes off the real thing. Yes. You see, it is Satan M.O. to get your eyes off of the real thing is. that's happening. Slide of hand. The yes. slide of hand, oh, yeah. Yeah. the trick. The yes. trickery, you know, to get us off mm -hmm. focus of the real battle. Yes. Um, one of the things that Satan will do is, you know, it's like a chess mm -hmm. game. You know, I have a friend, uh, Bernard Baker, he's a great chess guy. And he, he often would tell me about chess. And he said, you know, Mark, chess is not about you reacting to the first move some, your opponent makes. Chess is about thinking five, six, seven, ten, fifteen 15 steps ahead. Yep. Keeping and so focus. many times mm -hmm. Satan will get us to the point where we react on a move he made uh, only to get us deeper into a problem. Exactly true. And God is saying if we have a spiritual perspective, if we, if we are spiritually minded, mm -hmm. we can then make decisions not based upon what we see, but make decisions based upon what we know. Who what we, we know. know. Well, oh, yeah. What yeah. we know. See. You know, many times, you know, my wife and I, we were in a conversation and we were talking and she was saying, I think, I think. And I said, don't tell me what you think. Tell me what you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Because we, at times, we, we can talk ourselves out of a blessing. Yes, absolutely. But God is saying, tell me what you know, Mark. Oh, oh that's good. Tell yeah. me what you know. Don't tell yeah. me what you think. See, yeah. there needs to be a confidence mm -hmm. than what you know rather than what we think. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, we, what we know from the Spirit and from the Word of God, not based on personal opinion. Exactly. <laughs> That's what gets us in trouble, our <laughs> stuff. <laughs> our stuff, exactly. Well, yeah. the, like the book, The Intersection, the chapter about the intersection, this chapter is about uh, many of us have intersections in our lives. Mm -hmm. And these intersections are just a byproduct of what's going on in the spiritual realm. Right. Uh, for example, there was a friend of mine well, named Rich, and we were driving, we witnessed an accident. Mm -hmm. And this accident basically happened right in front of us. Well, make a long story short, we end up taking the gentleman home mm -hmm. and I witnessed to him in his kitchen and I asked him, you know, did you, are you saved? And he said, yes, I'm saved. I said, but if you were to die today, do you, would you know where you'd spend eternity? And he said, no. Ooh, wow. And I said, so I said the sinner's prayer with him and yes. he, 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 he's a new believer now. But I, I told him, I said, you had an intersection in life to have an intersection with heaven. <sighs> mm. Yeah. And so I wrote the book in that chapter about intersections in our lives that are crossed with intersections with God. Yeah, yeah. God will impact you on earth till he can impact you in heaven. Yeah, yes, he will. And, and to change your course in, in so many times. So just like this gentleman. Yes. Who, who had a, a thought that he was saved. Right. but was uncertain about what his eternity would be. Exactly. It's just amazing how the Lord will bring you to the place to say, now, you need to make a decision. <laughs> you need to make a decision. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm enjoying this program tonight and this, this gathering. You know, I have, I struggle using the word program. I feel like it's more like a church service in many cases Amen. as we're coming together. And so, Mark, we're going to come back here in just a little bit and talk to you some more. Uh, and, uh, but I, I, want us, I want us to bear in mind, too, that people are, are in need tonight. And I want you to continue 
to call your prayer needs in. Just keep ringing the phone, whatever it is. If you need to be born again, somebody's there who can lead you in a prayer and show you the way to Christ. It's so simple. It's so easy. So we want you to continue to stay plugged into this, this time tonight. We want you to stay right here with us. And I want you to remember, God can do anything. So, so keep on calling. Keep on hanging with us. Don't you go anywhere because we're coming back here in just a moment. And we're going we're gonna to continue to talk with Mark Scott. He's written a book called The Appointment, uh, A Wake-Up Call to the Church. And uh, Mark, Mark, tell us a little bit uh, uh, about yourself. Give me, give me some details here about yourself. Well, I, I started in television um, about 18 years ago uh, after college. I, I had an internship at CBN, uh, Christian Broadcasting Network, and it was a great place to work. I, I got really a great foundation at CBN. Uh, uh, working with some great people there, and Pat Robertson, the Pat, 700 Club. Pat Robertson, the 700 Club. All right, and and really got a great foundation when it comes to media, television, producing, writing, editing, and things of that nature. Excellent. And and really just started to look at you know ministries and work with Fox Family Channel. Really. Uh, and 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 did some work with God TV as well, and just you know worked with a lot of ministries, you know, yeah. and. God has just literally used me in the media uh, plan. Then he started using me in ministry. And my dad went out when my dad was like, he passed away two years ago. Mm -hmm. And my, I was ministering in my dad's church. Uh, and awesome. God began to use me there. And then I had some invitations elsewhere. Other people, Mark, come, would you share a word with us? And God's been using me in that platform. So, so do you pastor now? Or do you, no, well, you don't? I, I don't pastor. Uh, I, I, God, basically, wherever he tells me to preach or to, to mm -hmm. go out and, and share the word, I, I do that. That's, that's you know? excellent. Now, we, we're talking about some of these chapters that you've got here in your book. It's just some interesting things. Uh, tell, us, tell us about this one, A, a True Friend. A True Friend. Uh, as I begin to look at Jesus' relationship to Judas, versus Jesus' relationship to Peter. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was puzzled because one of the things that I was astonished by was that both were linked to the, to the group, but one was disconnected. Yeah. And I kept thinking, wow, they were right in proximity of Jesus. They saw the miracles, mm -hmm. both, but why was one connected and the other disconnected? Mm -hmm. And I think there's something that, that I begin to look at as far as your openness, you know, to people and to friends. You know, it, it almost like that Murray and Martha syndrome, you know. Oh, yeah, You absolutely. know, Jesus comes in and mm -hmm. one is cooking and doing all this and the yes. other one is spending time with them. Right. And there has to be a desire in us to want to know mm -hmm. the creator of the universe. Right. And that desire has to be birthed out of simply us being aware of who he is. Yes. You know, if you look at Judas, you know, both were around Jesus all the time. True. Probably Judas, maybe more, I don't know. But, yeah. but they, they were around, they saw, they witnessed, they experienced the, the miracles. But I looked at that and I equated that to how we are in the church. Are we connected to the church and disconnected to God? Mm. Are we connected to programs and functions in the church right. and disconnected to God? Well, wow. Are we looking at church as our relationship versus looking at God as our relationship? My. And so God was, was sharing with me as I was writing the book to, to really look at those two relationships and look at the symbolism of how we compare our relationship to God on a personal basis. And make it simplistic. It's like yes. somebody said, just cause you in the pasture don't make you a cow. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And, and that's, you, you, that, that is, as a pastor, brother, may I confide in you here for a moment <laughs> in, in front of all these people. Mm -hmm. that, that's one of the things that is the most frustrating to me mm -hmm. is it, it almost appears that there are people around the church that, that they're in, they're at the church. They're in the right. church. But, but the relationship just don't f seem right it, it, to it, me. Exactly. Well, one of the things is, is I, I think and I feel as I was writing,
but more so as God was depositing something in me mm. about the chapter about the fig tree. And, and I, yeah. I, I was looking at it, and I, I kept wondering, why did Jesus come across this fig tree and curse the fig tree? What did the fig tree <laughs> do? I mean, what, what did he do? What did he do? <laughs> That's what he, interesting. But, but I looked at that, and I began to do a study on the fig tree. Yes. And I began to understand. And then as I was walking through and, and really deciphering through mm -hmm. the, the study of the fig tree, when they build the fig tree, they build it down, mm -hmm. and sometimes they build the roots uh, 8 to 15 feet deep. Wow. Amazing. And what they cover it with, they cover it with a canvas, and then they cover it with wires. And so, and I kept thinking, wow, well, why did they cover it with two things? Then I did some more study, and then the fig tree produces two types of fruit. The first fruit, you know, and they call it Bebra. You know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a jail base, and it comes to the, mm -hmm. and then it comes to a hardened, hardened substance. But concentrating on the roots, I began to look at that. And they protect it, they protect the roots with a canvas and wire. Now the canvas protect it from the worms. And the 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 cage and the wiring protect it from the gophers. Ah, and so they protected that because they wanted to make sure that because the, the first thing animals went for was the root. Oh yeah. Because the root is where the nutrients are. Oh, yeah. And where you have the vital uh, uh, vitamins and the growth. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the symbolism of that to our prayer life. Mm -hmm. When you don't protect your prayer life, what happens is you, you, you become dried up. Oh, yeah. You become bitter. Mm -hmm. and mean. Yeah. Mean, mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. hard to get along with. Wow. And God is saying we have to protect these things that God calls as intimate. See, see because that's relationship. It's relationship. At pe people... A lot of people in the church don't realize prayer is relationship. Yes. See, yes. I, I, can't, I can't have a relationship with my wife unless I, I spend time with her in, in an intimate fashion. I can't just be, you know, it, give, give me a sandwich, you know. It, it, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and, well, she's going to give you a sandwich, but it might not be the sandwich you like, mm, you know. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but, but one of the things that, that as we, we move through, and, and as I was writing chapters after chapters in the book, and I began to understand that, that, that God was really writing a blueprint. Oh, I like that. A blueprint for a That's course good. correction. Oh, man. That's really you good. You know, if, if you turn a ship, a huge ship, it takes a long time for a huge ship to turn. Yes, sir. I mean, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 mm -hmm. degrees. Mm -hmm. And if you don't turn quick, you might hit that iceberg. Mm -hmm. a smaller ship. You can turn maybe, not on a dime, but it will turn. Right. Sailboat, mm -hmm. you know. But what was God doing in the Bible was laying out a blueprint for a course that mm. was set for us as Christians. Christians, as we are coming into a, to, to the church, new believers, are we really giving them the tools that God designed them to have? Or do we have a naming and claiming mm. type of, you know, right. or we need to, they need to have the tools. Now the tools yeah. are, the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yes. but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Absolutely. You cannot fight a spiritual battle using fleshly weapons. It won't work. No, it won't work. That's right. I need the weapons, God, because yeah. the enemy, he's real. Absolutely. That's true. And we need the we weapons of praise, the weapons mm -hmm. of prayer, the weapons of what? Spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. But God was saying to me that, Mark, you, there are weapons that God has intended for you to learn at an mm -hmm. early age. Absolutely. So you can fight even better. Yes. And people need more than, than just fillers. Just yes. a little, little church time, you know. The, we, we need that relationship. Right now, we're going to Becky West. Look for me. All right.
And you behold all its beauty and its splendor. Remember there's one request I make of you. Look for me, for I will be there too. I realize when you arrive, there'll be so much to view after you. As you go down your list of firsts, there's no question. You'll want to see our loved ones waiting there for you. And when you feel you've shared your story with the last one, that wants to hear you tell just how you made it through. Look for me, for I will be there too. I realize when you arrive, there'll be so much. After you've been there ten thousand years, a million, maybe two, look for me, for I will be there too. After you've been there ten thousand years, a million, maybe two. Becky West, thank you so much. Um, talking to Mark Scott here about his book, The Appointment, and and this is this is really good. Let's let's talk about this this chapter here, how to hear the voice of God, and just just reading a little bit, scanning. That this is this is good. Tell tell us about that. Well, basically, um, it, you know, the this chapter it, when it talks about how to hear the voice of God, God always hears the cry of a baby. Mm. Mm. And I subtitled that in the chapter. You always hear the cry. There are times in your life that literally you can do nothing but cry. Yeah, absolutely. And in those tears, they are actually communicating to God, mm -hmm. not just of a desperation, but of a heart cry that God is saying, son, I hear you. I will answer your prayers. Mm -hmm. I will be next to you. To hear the voice of God, sometimes many of us, as an infant, it is interesting, even as an infant, they, un, they, they know the voice of their caregiver or, <laughs> or a father or mother. Yes, they do. They can turn their little heads. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and, they, and that's, it's incredible that they know that. You know, it my is. dad, you know, Reverend Joseph Scott, he's a great man of God, uh, a great pastor. Uh, he would call us two blocks away, and I can hear his voice. Oh, yeah. Two blocks away. He had that 
distinctive, that, that, oh, yeah. it is distinctive. You know, inflection in his voice that mm -hmm. I understood mm -hmm. where he was and where he wanted just by saying, Mark, get down here. <laughs> so, yes. but God was saying there are times when God speaks through his word. He, sp he might speak through a conversation that you are hearing somebody else talking about. That's true. God will speak through signs mm -hmm. that he, he will speak to you in, 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 in a soft in music, like the beautiful music. He'll speak yes. to you in several different ways. But the, one, the voice that you are obedient to is the one that is dominant. I'm going to say mm -hmm. that again. Mm -hmm. The voice that you are responding to will become the most dominant voice. Yes. That's why it's, it's, it's very important that God's voice is the predominant voice that yes. we hear. My sheep. And we, my sheep know my yes. voice. Absolutely. And, and so God is trying to draw us closer to him, but he is waiting for us to respond to a call. Oh, oh he wants that response. That's, that's beautiful. You know, it reminded me, when our first child was born, um, Lindsay, she was born by cesarean birth. Mm -hmm. So when, when they got her, she was, she was crying. She was, she was upset. But, but I had been talking to her wow. all the time. My wife was carrying her. I would read the scriptures to her. I would just talk to her at night. I'd even read the encyclopedia to her right. and stuff, you know. Right. And right. so as soon as I spoke to her, just like that, she quieted. Yes. yes. So... You know what? God, God is looking for that kind of response. He's looking. Us, yeah. He's looking. There's a story in the book I talk about uh, a couple who desired to have a child. And they prayed for seven years. Mm. And, and, and unfortunately, they couldn't have a, a, a child through natural birth. Uh, so what they did was they adopted yes. a, a, a child. And... And this was an amazing story because the story has so many different symbolisms in it that I, I, it would take another show to, to talk about. But the, the child, basically, the mother who was carrying the child was, uh, was using cocaine and crack wow. all through her pregnancy. Mm. Oh, my. But the, the, the couple knew this about the child, and they desired to have this baby. Right. Knowing that the baby will have, will, will have withdrawals, knowing that the baby will probably have some problems, and they still desired to come after this child, and they adopted this child. Well, when they got the child home, the baby cried all night, mm -hmm. uh, vomited all day, you know, the withdrawals of cocaine and, and things yes. of that, that nature. And the Lord began to, to talk to me about how, Mark, yet you were in sin, and I still came after you. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were in sin, and, 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 and the mother had to wrap the baby up tight in a blanket, and that's the only way the baby would stop crying mm -hmm. at 2, 3 in the morning. It was an amazing story. And God was showing me how that baby, rep that blanket represented God's love. <laughs> oh, yeah. How he, right. he wraps us at times where, listen, you know, God, I, I, I have no answers. God said, Mark, I got it covered. Mm. And, and that's what another chapter I talk about, the unseen journey, is what you cannot see. Yeah. Is real. Uh, oh yeah. What you cannot yeah. see is real. Now I, I got to ask you, Mark. Um, this book is available. Where can people get your book? They can get it at Barnes and Noble. Okay. They can order it online at Barnes and Noble on Amazon, um, and and uh, they can go to the website. Uh, I believe is theappointment.net. There we go. There's the information there. The awesome. Yeah, theappointment.net. Okay. And they can uh, go online there. And uh, they, every, all the information is there where they can click on and they'll take you right to the book. What, what if somebody would like for you to come by to, to, to preach, to speak, to, to address a group of folks? Yes, and they can also, on that email, there's a ministry link there that you click on the ministry link. Or you can also hit me on uh, the appointment by Mark Scott uh, at gmail.com. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, I've enjoyed talking to you tonight. Thank you. It's and a we, we appreciate here. you taking your time oh, to come back. You. What, you're from Virginia. You live in Virginia now. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah right now we're in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Birmingham, Alabama. Well, well, thank you so much for coming and being a part of this program. Blessings on you. Thank you.